Thank you to Pranav and Arun for organizing that session beautifully and sticking to time. Now to the next session, Upscaling in Pursuit of Excellence, and I invite the moderators, Taral Nagda and Parag. Parag, you're here, you might as well stay back to take on the next session. Thanks, we are really looking forward to this session. May I call upon uh, Dr. Ram Chadda and uh, Dr. Atul Srivastava, please come up to uh, chair this session. Dr. Ram and Dr. Atul. Yeah. I now request uh, uh, Taral Nagda, who is the convener of uh, this session. This is going to be a very unique session to set the tone and uh, give an introduction to the session. So I would also like to invite uh, Dr. Shekhar Bhojraj uh, and Dr. Kashya Padesharna, who are the two panelists. So we are eight people uh, who are going to explore this session. The chairpersons on this side. We have panelists on the left. Yeah. I think everyone can sit uh, on one side. This is the interest of all the viewers so that they can have their neck moving only to one side and they can prevent a neck pain. So scaling up, Parag, Dr. Junjunwala just asked me in the last session, is this a session about geometry or mathematics? We were discussing 3D printed jigs and, and uh, Dr. Bojraj, when I told him, you know, uh, this session is about scaling up and you have to come, he said, Taral, is scaling up kya hai? And uh, can I have the volume, Peter? It's all about this. Ha, yehi rasta hai tera, tu ne ab jana hai. It's about knowing your passion. Ha, yehi sapna hai tera, tu ne pehchana hai. It's about knowing your true potential. So I think Ashish who suggested me this session, can we have sounds down here? Yeah. You know, he and me, we have heard the story of this Panwala a lot of times from Dr. Thakkar who is uh, 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 chief of the hospital both of us work in. This is a guy who is very famous, makes all kind of pans, all celebrities buy pan from him, Muchar Panwala. But he's still Panwala in a small shop. He has a lot of more potential and we'll, we'll realize what is that potential he has. An orthopedic surgeon who is a haddiwala, he is similar to that. When I finished my MS exam, I was happy to have a clinic, you know, operate at few nursing homes and now I operate at few corporate hospitals. A dream of success ends over there. Being an orthopedic surgeon, what do Viroc teaches us? It teaches us to do distal end of radius better, to avoid complications, it talks about putting screws, there is one odd session, one end, where people talk about photographs and uh, music. That's all our passion, uh, our ambition ends. Look at some of these stories here. This is a small shop in Pandarpur, a small chai shop. Today, this has scaled up to this Yevle tea business, which has 350 branches and not 100 or 1000. They have 5 lakh cups of tea being served every day. This is a small eye clinic and this eye clinic in Madurai escalated to Irwin Eye Hospital. They have 14 eye hospitals, 6 outpatient eye examination centers, 100 primary eye care facilities, more than 4.5 lakh eye surgeries a year and they are largest eye care provider in the world. They also train a lot of eye surgeons in different specialities, you know, like how Tata also makes steel, they also train people. Some of the social enterprises here, a small organization started to feed village children to make them to go to school. Akshay Patra, today it reaches 2 million children receiving midday meals every day in 65 kitchens, 14 states and 2 union territories. Where are we as orthopedic surgeons among this? You know, so 
upscaling and downscaling parag is here who is who is talk, talk, talking to you about going up the ladder i am a person who likes to visit different parts of the country and spread horizontally and we are going to explore meaning of this world upscaling and like how there is a story of elephant and six blind men we have four and two and two more eight blind people here trying to study upscaling we have dr devi shetty who is not only a world famous cardiac surgeon but also medical entrepreneur runs 21 hospitals across india today and it's a listed company dr guruwar reddy founder and chairperson of sunshine hospitals and also happens to be an orthopedic surgeon a uh, uh, meaning of upscaling from him dr shekhar bojraj a different meaning of upscaling in a social context and then we have an aam aadmi orthopedic surgeon dr kashyap adesharna from junagadh you know talking to us about what is his meaning of upscaling and 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 deriving true potential from their lives so i hand over with this introduction to parag to you know have the talks and then discussion thank you parag uh, thank you so much taral uh, we are now going to jump into the session we have four great speakers as were introduced to you by taral and uh, we are going to have five minutes talk by each of them and we are first going to start with uh, dr devi shetty who is a big inspiration for many of us and he's going to tell us you know how the healthcare scenario is changing how it is going to lead the world the india is going to show the trend and uh, what volumes does to scaling up over to devi shetty he could not come personally but he's sent in a video anand i would like to congratulate bombay orthopedic society for conducting the 57th annual society meeting it's a great achievement talking about scaling up especially in the area of healthcare i am convinced that india will show the way how to scale up healthcare to reach out to 1.4 billion population of our country i have no doubt that india will become the first country in the world to dissociate healthcare from affluence india will do it within the next 5 to 7 years india will prove to the world that the wealth of the nation has nothing to do with the quality of healthcare its citizens can enjoy how this massive transformation can happen this transformation will happen because soon we will have large number of health insurance companies which will offer health care to everyone the poorest of the poor people will come to our hospital with a health insurance program i am not talking about the government schemes i am talking about private enterprises coming up with low cost affordable health insurance programs and there will be hundreds of them coming up virtually every citizen of the country will have a health insurance program when this massive transformation happens the entire dynamics of the healthcare delivery will change today we try to charge the rich people slightly more to subsidize the care of the poor people imagine if poor people through the financial intermediary called health insurance pays for the uh, treatment what it costs then we don't need to look at the cross subsidy and the number of people who will enter the hospital will be astronomical i'll give you one example india require 65 million surgeries of all types every year and currently india is doing only 25 million surgeries now what happens to the remaining 40 million why they are not getting the surgery done is it because they don't know they need surgery no they can't afford to undergo the surgery they don't have the money they don't have the means to pay for it but when a financial intermediary comes 
entire scenario will change now you will be wondering how is it going to happen how is that india pays the least amount of money for the mobile phone we use the same mobile phone like a british citizen or american citizen we use the same technology same bandwidth but we pay a fraction of the cost why because 1 billion people are using the mobile phone 16 17 years ago we launched a health insurance called yashaswini with just 5 rupees per month we declared that any surgery on the human body including heart operation can be done nobody believed nobody believed because 5 rupees given by 10 people doesn't buy anything when 5 rupees is paid by 4.5 million people and government come walks in as the reinsurer amazing things happen in a matter of 12 14 years 1.3 million surgeries were done starting from gallbladder surgery to heart operation and all kinds of procedures over one and a half lakh farmers had a heart operation just by paying five rupees per month this is the power of scaling up and you will see the power of scaling up in healthcare very very shortly in our country future is exciting good luck and god bless That, that was a great message, you know, a country of 1.4 billion and with a deficit of 40 uh, uh, lakhs. You know, we, there's a lot of work to be done. So I think uh, with this, we go on to the next talk. And unfortunately, Dr. Gurua, who was supposed to be here in person, couldn't because his father has some health issues. So he has apologized, but very promptly sent his talk. And he's going to talk more on corporate scaling. Over to Dr. Gurua's video. Uh, good evening, everyone. The scaling up of uh, orthopedic operations is the theme of my talk. I will deal it with on a very uh, bird's eye view from a corporate level point of view. In India, if you want to do anything big, you just need three Fs. Friends, family and fools to trust you. That is the simple logic behind that. Whether we should scale it up or not is the eternal debate. The scaling up is entirely a personal choice. But if you see in the proper perspective, the scaling up of uh, clinical services is going to have two benefits. One, you can serve more people in a more efficient way. Number two, it will add value to the system and it's a value creation. End of the day, any country to go forward, it is not the materials, but it is the value creation that is going to be uh, important. So value creation is not synonymous with creation of wealth and creation of the bank accounts, creation of the balance sheet. So I would enumerate following the principles which I believe should be uh, followed. Number one is when you start a practice, let us say an orthopedic hospital, first of all you should establish the brand and you should establish the DNA and you should establish the reputation for that brand. So in the first five years you should not even dream to scale up. So five years you establish the hospital and let the people talk about that the way you want. Let us say this hospital is good, it is a good value for money, they are not money minded. So that sort of reputation you should build it up. Ideally, 100 bed hospital is okay, even scaling up 100 to 150 beds, not more than that. I would see from a different angle in Indian context, uh, basically there are some two, three branches which are very amenable for uh, standalone practice. Their orthopedics and neurosurgery are the two branches. So I'll call it as bone and brain hospitals. So basically, orthopedics all under one roof, joint replacement, spine, arthroscope, everything and the neurosurgery because both neurosurgery and orthopedic come, comes under polytrauma. So neurotrauma, skeletal trauma come together. Then one good ICU. So if you put bone and brain hospital of 100 and 150 bed with a good ICU, you are done. You don't need to put any other branch. 
And the second point is once you develop the brand, once you develop the the last thing is uh, all the time you won't have any um, roses. Sometimes you will have uh, challenges. Sometimes you know that ship is sinking. A wise man is the one who knows when to abandon the sinking ship. That means all the units may not be functioning well, but you should put some endpoints. And if you don't reach that goals, you should abolish that and close that hospital unit. There is no point of uh, clinging to the bleeding hospitals. That is again very important point for an entrepreneur who wants to scale up. <coughs> Finally, corporate hospitals need not be looked as a greedy triculas sucking the blood. You can still have a, a good relationship with the patient and serve the people in needy and then still maintain a good balance sheet. So it's a very important point. Corporate hospital need not be a charity hospital like Mother Teresa Hospital, but at the same time you don't need to be paraded as a greedy and blood sucking hospital. So these are the some of the salient features which I feel important and definitely scaling up is good for the uh, society, good for the doctors and good for the country also. But you have to know the principles and practices. So two different views here, Devi Shetty talking about volumes and uh, Dr. Guru already talking about value and saying that it's not for wealth but it's for value creation. Let's uh, look at one more you know, aspect of scaling up and I invite Dr. Shekhar Bojraj here, uh, teachers to many of us to talk about what he feels is scaling up and uh, how should one get inspired about that and how to achieve that. Sir, what? Good evening, uh, everybody. We, on behalf of the Spine Foundation, sincerely thank the organizers for giving us this opportunity to express our views briefly amongst esteemed panelists and interested audience. Scaling up, what does it mean? Scaling up could mean different things to different people. When Taral called me up, I started thinking about the term itself. For some, it could mean scaling up in professional work and in one's own practice to generate more revenue by advanced marketing strategies and management techniques. For others, it could mean scaling up of one's own self at different levels of mind, body and soul. This could be through healthier lifestyles as we have been advised with exercise and diet plans or meditation and mindfulness or pursuing various art forms as we have seen in the kaleidoscope section of this conference or through spiritual realizations popularly called as enlightenment. But for us at the Spine Foundation, after almost 25 years of work experience and realization, upscaling actually means downscaling in various forms to facilitate reaching out to the unreachable in remote interior areas. The concept of the Spine Foundation involves reaching out to the remotest grassroots to identify needy patients with spine ailments, evaluating them with not too advanced methods which are affordable, investigating them with affordable modalities and finally treating them conservatively or in a few with time-tested simplistic surgical techniques which are easily executed at the peripheral level and also easily taught by the team to the local interested caregivers so that we could hand over the project eventually and move on to the next center. The, the downscaling efforts of simplification actually helps scaling up of our projects and that directly reflects on increasing our reach far and out. From starting at Gadchiroli over 18 long years ago, we now have fanned out almost to cover 11 such centers, not only in interior Maharashtra, where we have centers in Nandurbar, Ratnagiri, Akola, Dhue, and Ambejogai, but have also managed to reach out to the other states like Uttaranchal near Dehradun, Gujarat near Dharampur, and to Tamil Nadu 
in the deep tribal villages of Sitilingi. This is a joint effort of our battalion of qualified spine fellows, anesthetists, helpers and assistants and of course the indispensable rehabilitation team. We at the Spine Foundation in our Silver Jubilee year this year have truly found a purpose at upscaling our projects by truly downscaling our methods and simplifying our techniques to suit and serve the truly underprivileged unfortunate patients with spine ailments. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, thanks, Bhoja, sir. That was an indeed uh, bird's eye view to the work you're doing through the Spine Foundation. And I think it is a, a corporate social responsibility of each of one of us to do that. We will have question answer sessions later. But for the last talk today, uh, may I call upon Kashyap Ardeshna from Junagad. And he's going to speak to us on self scaling. And I think this is a talk which will resonate with. Most of us in this room, I'm eagerly looking forward to hear Kashyap. Over to you. Good evening, everybody. Thank, thank you to organizers of IROC, moderator sirs, and chairman sirs. Uh, when, when I got a call from Taralbhai saying that we are planning such and such uh, panel discussion and I want you to make a part of this, I said, what is my place in this medical biggies? So, okay, no, I, don't, I want you to represent Amadmi. Amadmi matlab, most of the, say 90% of the orthopedic surgeons are working in peri, peri They are like, you know, RK Lakshman is common man. I'm a common orthopedic guy, right? Who want to fly, fly. So, everybody has, in a, you know, prior practice, they have a uh, feeling of, you know, getting success in many aspects of life. The same is a story of mine. I come from Junagat, which is a very uh, rich in heritage and nature. I welcome you all to be guests there. I started my private practice in 2000. It was an 11 bedded small nursing home in a private, uh, comple uh, commercial complex. And at that time, I was very immature as an orthopedic surgeon. So, I was I actually not worked trauma under CM also. That time we used to do surgery in, when I, I was in uh, institute. We, we did our surgeries in x-rays. So, I had no exposure to uh, other than trauma. No arthroplasty, no arthroscopy and no complex surgeries. But the book which gave me constant inspiration is this. It's in Jonathan Livingston Siegel. It's a very nice small read of one hour by Richard Bach. It's a simple story of Siegel trying to fly higher. But it is a profound message. What's, what it says is, don't believe what your eyes tell you. Because all that so is limitations. So three to four years in my practice, when I established as a basic good orthopedic surgeon, I started feeling there is a sense of lacking something. I wanted to reach higher and higher, but I felt whether my center is allowing me to do, do that because I had no academic, academic background. There are no people with that type of mindset and there was no direct connection with academics. I strived for knowledge. I thought where to get knowledge. So I used to uh, attend most of the BOS courses I uh, did in some 2005, and, uh, five, six, seven years. I did all uh, joint replacement, cadaver courses, spine courses, and number of courses. So BOS has helped me a lot in uh, reaching up to this stage. But now we have Ortho TV, or as they famously known as a Netflix. But I would probably say it's a Campbell of orthopedics. I really worked hard during the eight, ten years after three to four years when I started developing into all uh, deeper branches and all that. Like you, we say, you know, Pandit Choti Bandke Jese Padta hai na, that I used to read even in my private practice days. I used to attend many conferences, many cadaver workshops and gradually developed the skills of arthroscopy, arthroplasty. I did some observership in India at Pune Sancheti Hospital and some abroad. The compound effect started showing up after ten years. So the one thing which I, I would tell you is even, even whatever hard work you do, it takes some time, right, to appear. So it, say in 2014, I made a new hospital which was 25-bedded hospital and I was gradually uh, became a faculty to many conferences. The teachers from which I used to, uh, you know, listen and learn started giving me an opportunity to be colleagues and also I innovated few implants. And every time I kept my goal escalating. If I say in a monetary or a physical aspect, so when I was doing surgery once in a week, I set a goal of every day one surgery. So now if I am doing three surgeries per day, then my current goal is to do seven surgeries per day. Right? The goal, 
should not be monetary or physical but the goal should be about learning serving and self satisfaction so now the, my next goal is i am planning for 100 bed hospital as dr gurwa already said it's the right uh, uh, kind of you know setup to start with i am grateful to many teachers and mentors during my journey of this 20 years of orthopedics some of my teachers some of some have helped me at many stages so i am very grateful to those all what self scaling mantras i would like to uh, miss you know what i have experienced we 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 need to have a dream dream is not only just thinking of something we should have an intense desire of achieving something and we should have a right attitude i always believed that if somebody can do it i can also do it so you set your goals accordingly work intensely for that but you need to have perseverance we need to be grateful at the same time we need to be forgiving because many of the people would have helped you and many of the people you might feel that they have not helped you properly but don't don't keep that in mind just forgive them and you need to have a faith in god and the self so i want to fly higher thank you that was indeed a, a great talk kashyap you really uh, did well uh, after these four talks now we are going to move into a panel discussion and we have uh, four panelists here we are also going to ask dr atul uh, who is the incoming uh, who is the president now of uh, ioa and then uh, also we will be questioning and asking questions to uh, dr ram chadda and of course dr bhojra sir and dr kashyap so uh, not now the talk is later here yeah. so what we will do now is uh, we will ask them questions let me first start the questions by asking bhojra sir uh, bhojra sir uh, what made you get into this you know upscaling and thinking of the spine foundation and really giving back to the society so it's a kind of a csr you are doing in spite of being such a busy surgeon you know such a massive practice who's who of mumbai goes to you but yet you find time to do these activities in gadchiroli in uh, in himalayas in uh, nandurbar and such places so what was it that made you think and go this line so i think there are two things in this one is the thought and second is the execution the thought comes from a family background a genetic background because i have as i've said somewhere else come from a gandhian background you know uh, i have always been hearing stories uh, about giving back to the society and as you know i have been in uh, a municipal general hospital km for over 18 years i think that also sort of uh, put the seed in the soil and when i entered practice there was a big vacuum and i felt the need to give back because uh, when i entered practice uh, after 18 years of uh, being in a municipal hospital plus the family background so that was the thought and we set up the foundation but the more important thing is the execution just the thought is not enough and here i would like to emphasize that it's not a one man show and uh, it's by the the foundation has uh, so many people right from uh, you know so i am not part i am just uh, one of the foundation person the assistant who's there is equally important and the fellowship program we have we have now over 40 to 50 independent spine surgeons spread all over the country who sign up for these projects at any given time and we have a time table so i think the execution is not a one man show the thought is but now we share the same purpose and we share the same thought so i think it's very important and more and more people are getting uh, Uh, sort of joined up yeah. to the foundation so that's important you know i think you know as orthopedic surgeons you know uh, we are healers and we have the capacity to heal patients so in addition to you know what our professional and academic practices in hospitals in cities i think some time has to be given to uh, the people who are the underprivileged and as also what was said by uh, uh, dr devi shetty you know there is such a big deficit of surgeries which is required which is nearly about you know 35 to 40 million surgeries which are not done because of uh, want of finances and you know the patients cannot afford it so i think that's a great thing and all of us have to learn from uh, bhojrat sir i'm 
sure, Parag, from this 40 million undone surgeries, a lot of them are also knee replacements and spine surgeries and club fit which are untreated and not done. And there is a big need to do that. I want to ask the audience here, uh, how many of you are absolutely satisfied with the you know, sort of success you've had? Just raise your hands. And there is no further goals. Dr. Ingalalikar, I understand. And there are some more people. How many of you feel that you achieved what you wanted to, but you want to do something still more? Yeah, a lot more people here still want to do something more. Ram, I want to ask you, and all of us are cream of society. We got highest marks in 12th and then took up medicine. We got highest marks in medicine, MBBS and took orthopedics. We are supposed to be the most intelligent people, most daring people. We do difficult surgeries. Why we are scared of being an entrepreneur? You know, what stops us? Over to you, Ram. Well, to be truthful, we are all entrepreneurs in our own way. We are not necessarily um, creating a brand which you believe we should. However, we are doing it in our own way. Each one of these four people who spoke, the first one, Guruva spoke about, no, the first one is Dr. Devi Shetty who spoke about volumes. The second was Dr. Guruva Reddy who spoke about values. The third was Dr. Bhojraj, who spoke about widening the base. And I go back 25 years when both of us wanted to read a book written by C.K. Pralad, which is to serve the bottom of the pyramid. And our dear friend who spoke about how being a, a vociferous reader made him inculcate what he read into his daily routines. So we are all entrepreneurs in our own way. It depends on which game you are playing in the playing field. Devi Shetty has a different playing field. Gurwa has a different playing field. Dr. Bhojraj has a different playing field. You and I have different playing fields. So it's not that we are not entrepreneurs. We are. However, our interpretation of success is very different. Some of us feel we shall wait to become successful and then become happy. Because we believe that success begets happiness. And there are few stupid guys like me who feel that happiness begets success. And I find happiness in small things. And that satisfies me. So it's a matter of what you want to be an entrepreneur in. Materialistic success or happiness and satisfaction. So we all are entrepreneurs, it's not that, but we cannot translate it into metrics because we gave up commerce and we took science, yaar, humko nahi samajta hai ginti, Or do. Absolutely, well said Ram, I think that's, each one of us, you know, you do small things, you get satisfaction and each one has his own calling and when I summarize, I'm going to speak a little more about that. I want to ask the next question to Atul and then we are going to take a couple of questions from the audience. So if anyone has a question, just get ready with, get ready with your questions to any of the panelists. So Atul, you know, being now the president of the Indian Orthopedic Association, which is the topmost organization for the orthopedic fraternity, whenever we have conferences, you know, we have a lot of sessions on TKRs and lower end radius and a lot of academic things. But I think sessions like these, are necessary, you know, to be included, to stimulate thinking, you know, from stalwarts like Bhojraj sir, Kashyap, Devi Shetty, Guru Reddy. So what do you think can be done, uh, you know, being uh, in the highest office today in IOA? Uh, what are your thoughts on how to inculcate these kind of thinking on scaling up and so many other things in amongst the orthopedic surgeons? What would you do? So scaling up and scaling up. Soft skills and besides orthopedics. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is why you see that in the Indian Orthopedic Association, we today have a separate committee for the surgical as well as the soft skills. That is to scale you up. Uh, can I? Uh, I was not actually ready for this. Uh, I thought that I'd just be a mute chairperson and then walk away. But uh, during these uh, these courses, I have certain thoughts in my mind. Can I put them forward? Please. Two minutes, I will take. Uh, one thing is Dr. Shekhar Pujda sir very aptly said that this word called upscaling 
can mean different to different people. I mean, for me, and for an ordinary person, for an Aam Admi like Kashyap, a humble guy called Atul Shirvastav, being today the president of Indian Orthopedic Association, is also upscaling. So, who could have thought, but as Kashyap said, have faith in yourself and dream big and you will achieve it. Dr. Devi Shetty said that there are 65 million people who need surgery, but only around 25 get them. But few years back, only five used to get them. That is upscaling for me. Talking to ortho about orthopedics, I remember those days in the late 80s, early 90s, three of my relatives got an arthroplasty surgery done at Parag's Institute in Pune. Today we have an arthroplasty surgeon in each area, a competent one. That is upscaling. Gojarat sir is here. Scoliosis, in those times, north mein kaun karta hai? Dr. P.K. Dave. South mein kaun karta hai? Dr. Shri Ram. West mein kaun karta hai? Dr. Shekhar Bhujaraj. Today we have competent orthopedic surgeons doing successful scoliosis surgeries in each and every city. Thanks to the training by stalwarts like Dr. Bhujaraj. That is upscaling. Pelvi astabular. So that is what I feel is upscaling. Indian Orthopedic Association, in the last seven, eight years, we are 68 years old. We have doubled our membership in the last six, eight years. That is upscaling. So it means different to different people and I'm very happy that you involved Thank you. me. Thank you. So one question, Roshan. Yeah, uh, I have a question as well as a comment on uh, what everybody said here. Uh, I have been told when I joined my MBBS that you are going to a professional course. Professional course. Nobody taught me the profession. Nobody taught me the economics of the profession. Nobody taught me what are the fee structure. Nobody taught me how the hospital works up. In fact, nobody taught me the communication skills. These are basics. So we have been told to do the work as a charity and passion. I totally agree with Dr. Ram. Ethics plays more than entrepreneurship. But sir, Commerce and science go hand in hand. ISRO cannot work without money. NASA cannot work without money. There is a science. So even orthopedics has to have science and the commerce. We can't do this meeting without a commercial partners who are sitting next door. So I feel there is a time has come. We have to change our definitions beyond the passion, beyond the ethics. We should go back as a professional course and professional training course who has been told to do the professional work. Charity beyond certain age, suppose the orthopedic surgeon is going to stay, survive for 70 or 65 years. Yes, I can understand at the fag end of the year, you can do charity, the charitable work, the professional work. But the real profession which starts from age of 40 to 60 has to be your profession and you have to be labeled as a professional. Upscaling will come only with when you have a very good amalgamation of science and commerce. So the message has to be very clear among the audience. Absolutely. Absolutely right. So it's, it's not just science, commerce, but also arts. Because, you know, it, it, it requires uh, different kind of skill sets. Kashyap, I want to ask you one thing. So you came to BOS, went to Sanchetti Hospital, and you had your books to read about orthopedics. Where did you get your soft skills from? And secondly, would you be happier if you are in your training days or through association programs, those were also been taught. Yeah, that, that's a very a structured very, program. Yeah, that's a very oh, thanks. That's a very important uh, aspect of uh, practice uh, and the orthopedic. You know, as a ortho, see, I as you said, me, where did I learn? Right. So probably that was in genetics. Right. It was it was familial. You know, to converse with the people. To that was that was a natural for me. But that's not natural for all. For them, we need to actually take classes. That's like, you know, we have done the classes for uh, trauma surgery. We are doing AO courses. Then we can do this type of courses also. Other than that, I had a little bit lateral. Uh, uh, those uh, were also that I did entrepreneurship courses also. I did Santosh Nair's Entrepreneur Gurukul, which is a two years course and which I attended paying a very hefty fees. So those are the things which also added a different dimension to myself. So I, I feel that these are the things we must add into the curriculum from the start. Developing an attitude is, is, is very important. As an orthopedic surgeon, most of the orthopedic surgeons, when they come out of institute, they actually doesn't know how to even do good talking with the patient. 
no good conversation with the patient so for them it has to be you know like an intensive kind of a program where other than theory they should be actually sent to some successful people just just looking successful people for 10 to 15 days conversing with their patient would be a much different orthopedic surgeon out thank you thank you very much so you know uh, we keep adding up to our skills uh, the the time has come where we multiply things divide the work which we do but time is not infinite and uh, you know uh, we uh, rajesh is telling us to end scaling up uh, slowly so i would request parak to now summarize scale down what now. we have done scale down and <laughs> summarize yeah so for so next year i was speaking to dr sanjay dhar the president and uh, he has promised us a session on how to scale down while scaling up so that's for next year so let's uh, move on to the summary of what we heard in the last uh, uh, 35 to 40 minutes you know definitely scaling up is a pursuit of excellence and you've got to uh, really keep that in mind while your careers are going on we heard dr guru reddy who spoke about the corporate scaling and he he spoke about uh, how to involve friends family and forces you trust to do corporate scaling i think the important thing here is to professionalize the organization and one of the important things he said was the power of delegation to get more people in delegate the responsibility and get more people to run your hospital who are good at that particular thing as doctors as roshan was saying we are not trained in uh, the things which are required to now administer a hospital and grow it he spoke on initially build on the brand build up a reputation create a market and standardize the protocols what he used the word the mcdonaldization i think that is very very important while you are doing and because if you want to make five hospitals from your existing hospital i think those protocols and standards have to be set and i think uh, anyway you becoming corporate it's not about uh, creating more wealth you are creating more value which ultimately is going to increase the gdp of the country so i think that is very important when you uh, think of scaling up the corporate way we heard devi shetty and his talk was fantastic he spoke on how to really do scaling for the healthcare and india definitely has a lot of work to be done as he told us we are a population of 1.4 billion and you know 35 40 million surgeries every year uh, remain undone so remain uh, can you imagine how much work remains undone and through work like dr devi shetty uh, we can do it and i think the insurance policies which he said is going to be the game changer and going to be the paradigm shift in how healthcare is practiced you know the premiums currently are very high but uh, i predict as dr devi shetty also says in 5 to 7 years everybody will have some kind of an insurance policy like what he spoke giving 5 rupees you know if there are 1 million people who give 5 rupees look at the amount of corpus which gets collected and you know these kind of insurances are going to be more and more and that will be the way forward to really uh, deliver healthcare in india uh, shekhar boja sir spoke on scaling up socially and i think that is definitely important just it's like a complimentary talk to what uh, devi shetty spoke because you have to identify the ones who are in need and the ones in the cities the urban cities like mumbai pune nagpur aurangabad they don't need it they have good access they have good corporation hospitals good government hospitals where the healthcare is good but he told us how to outreach how to create and don't depend on the government he has made a foundation he has a formula he trains students he reaches where it is required he creates facilities to treat non operatively and operatively and that's really scaling up socially so fantastic sir that was a great message we heard dr kashyap speak on you know having mentors and having the mindset to go and train read books to go to different hospitals i think that is an important point kashyap you brought out it was really important and you know the kind of gratitude one should have so definitely conferences like this you should attend go and uh, hear talks which not necessarily are all about academics read books and definitely that will help you to scale up on a personal level and then you can choose uh, where to go and what to do so to each one upscaling is a little different upscaling uh, can mean something to you something to me something to our panelists so it can be a professional upscaling somebody is interested in research and you can do research upscaling somebody is interested in teaching 
and that can be also uh, uh, your upscale you teach you know the ortho tv how it started with you know very few people few delegates and now how it has scaled up you know and uh, that is an important tool for teaching bhujra sir told us about scaling up in social work the csr responsibility and you can scale up personally you may have uh, hobbies you know you may want to go bird watching you may want to go uh, and see wildlife you may want to have a good physique and you can scale up that way also it's not necessarily you have to scale up academically and in your career and of course the last thing is enlightenment and some people want to follow the path of uh, uh, getting uh, enlightened and getting uh, scaling up the spiritual way so for each one it is different and each one is right there is nothing right or wrong but all i want to say to you the message i want to give is scaling up is a necessity for everybody and everybody should have that thought in mind to scale up because what it does it even if you scale up or you don't scale up it keeps you abreast with what's happening it keeps you polished it keeps your brain active otherwise there is a tendency to be complacent we may think we are you know competent but you never know when complacency will uh, you know change over and you from competency you become complacent so the redundancy can set in fast so to that you always have to scale up like the industrial norm is 10% growth every year otherwise you are moving down so similarly even in our profession there has to be betterment there has to be scaling up from whatever you are doing and it can be in any of the ways for sir for sanchiti hospital we started with a 10 bedded hospital my father made it 50 bedded 150 and now we are moving to 300 so it's it's scaling up in a different way and for each one as i said it's different and you have to follow your inner calling your inner calling creates your vision and your inner calling creates your passion and once you are passionate about whatever you want to scale up then definitely you are going to be fueled up and you will follow that passion to scale up but it is important to scale up while doing this it is important to have a short term plan like you plan for the day plan for the week and a long term plan keeping you know the vision like uh, dr bhojra said he wants to you know make sure that the spine care reaches one and all and the underprivileged so that's a long term goal and his short term he's working on it similarly what devi shetty said is to create the insurance for everybody and he's working on it he started uh, you know that particular scheme and there are various ways to do it so you have to have a goal and a goal without a plan is just a wish and therefore it is important for us to understand that unless you have a passion a inner calling then you've got to really identify what is the short term thing you want to do and then a long term and all this can happen by planning otherwise it will just be a wish you've got to make a team you know a team is very important for upscaling and bigger the dream bigger the team you need and therefore alone you can't do much as a team you can definitely achieve much more you've got to brand you've got to build up what you stand for you've got to de develop your value system i think that is very important you've got to let people know social media is a very powerful tool and used in a right way can really achieve a lot i just want to say one thing don't compete with your peers don't compete with others don't compete with other uh, hospitals compete with yourself i think that is very important you should try and be better than what you were yesterday you should scale up more than what you scaled yesterday and i think if you keep that uh, as a goal then there will be no stress if you compete with somebody okay you know my colleague is making x number of uh, rupees every year now i want to make that much no yesterday i was making x i want to make x plus y yesterday i did uh, you know 10 surgeries i want to do 10 plus x yesterday i treated so many patients free how can i do more bhujra sir is already thinking you know what's next so i think competing with yourself is something which will not stress you you've got to be a better person than what you did uh, yesterday you do today and small micro changes in yourself if you can imagine you should just change little bit what changes it will lead to in one month in one year in 10 years so i think that's the value of competing with yourself and that is one message i want to give you while scaling up you should always compete with yourself and nobody else friends i want to end with this quote which i love by nelson mandela i never lose while scaling up i will never lose i either win or i learn thank you very much for your uh, kind attention everybody and i take this opportunity to thank 
Dr. Bhojrat sir for a lovely talk, Dr. Kashyap for a lovely talk, and we had two uh, online talks by Dr. Devi Shetty and uh, Dr. Gurwa Reddy, and of course our chairpersons, Dr. Ram and Dr. Atul, thank you so much. Over to Taral. Just want to add one word, Parag, you never lose, you always either win or learn, but you are always on time. So we finish on time at 50 minutes. Thank you, everybody. Perfect. Thank you so much. A big round of applause uh, for our speakers and chairpersons. Everybody, please join for a group photo.